and welcome along and welcome back to Charwell. Our oilseed radish has finally germinated, so it's hit its first stage. Uh, so we're immediately going to cultivate it in, ready to do some more crops in there. And uh, yeah, I, I tested this. I tested this out. We sold some more pigs. It's working again for some reason. And we have £10,000 to play with. So, uh, yeah, let's go get to it. So we're using the Terra Track for this job today. Uh, and the way we're going to do it, even though we've got a direct seeder uh, for our barley, I want to go and do the cultivating. or We're actually going to use a disc carrier, but I want to do the cultivating on field 41 first. So... This is what we're going to do. We have in here in our mods. Uh, we've got the Vatastad carrier pack. We, we're tending to use Vatastad equipment on this farm. Uh, so this is a nice 8 meter one. It should mean that we get through stuff fairly quickly. Uh, we're going to lease it because obviously we don't have 68,000 to spend on this. Uh, so I had to decide whether to have it with those bits on or not. I think I'm going to do it without it. Keep our leasing costs down. So let's lease that. Uh, and this should be quite a nice piece of kit. Eight meters means we're going to get this job done fairly swiftly as well. And we do have enough power with this tractor to do it. And this tractor has about 350 uh, horsepower. Uh, just having a quick look at our leased items. Uh, this has a 220 horsepower requirement. So actually we could, we could even use our other tractor, our JCB for this. Uh, it's quite an interesting thing because... Right, there's nothing on that. Uh, it's quite an interesting thing because if you go for a cultivator, cultivators require a lot more power for the same uh, for the same thing. Now, we're going to do field... As I said, we're going to do field 41 first. Reasoning behind this is uh, that it is... Uh, we're, we're going to be putting the barley in first because that's what we want to harvest first. And you can see here that we've got some nice oilseed radish in the ground. We don't need to let it grow any further than this. Uh, if we come into our map here, uh, we can see it is in first stage growth. So it's still fairly early on. Uh, but yeah, it should do fine. And I want to see, and you can see now it's listing it as fallow. Uh, no, it's this year's oilseed radish. So, yeah. Previous is cereal. Let's see if this changes it so that it now lists it as, um, uh, as fallow when we come in. So we'll unfold this. We are going to set ourselves a uh, GPS course. So we want to get to uh, 45 degrees, I think it is. Or 215-ish. I think it's 215. That would look around. Yeah, 43, 44, 45. Right, there we go. 225 is where we want to be. Set ourselves our first waypoint. There we go. Down. And away we go. And there we are. We'll then set second waypoint. Set width. And away we go. 225 points. Yeah, that is not right. So, we're going to snap terrain angle. Because that's the easiest way for us to do this. Clear our current uh, thing. There we go. And see if we can get back to 225. Yep. And give ourselves another setting there. Set the width again. And we're exactly on 225. Perfect. So hopefully now if I jump out here and have a look at the back... This still says previous of cereal. I wonder if you have to leave it for an entire year to do this. 
uh, because this is it's a little bit weird for this to cause that so uh, is it worth putting in the oilseed radish first we shall see but it is uh, it is doing okay we are doing well with this piece of kit um, I don't quite know why that is be, that would be the case because unfortunately oilseed radish has been pulled out and it should be rec it should be realizing this has had oilseed radish in here I'm wonder I, I am wondering if it is the case that it does need to be that an, in an entire year to full uh, to full growth on the OSR needs to go in before you can uh, get the full thing out of it which is slightly annoying because my hope was that that we would get through but either way whether this works or not we, we do kind of need to uh, to get past it and if it turns out that's the case uh, what we'll end up doing is uh, is changing our rotation to take this into account we can just leave a field OSR uh, for a year and actually maybe that is our that is our takeaway from doing this now uh, maybe we should skip the corn and uh, put just uh, no um, just thinking right we either got to put the barley or the corn into here uh, corn I think both of them actually won't do so well out of this so we're gonna we're gonna put both we're gonna put both the barley and the corn in this year uh, and then we will work out work it out from there next year I think is our best bet uh, because yeah at the moment it's it's not playing ball uh, and uh, and we are uh, yeah a little bit I'm a little bit confused as to what's going on with this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get through this field uh, so that we can get set up with the cedar on here and can get this job going and uh, and hopefully we're gonna get two fields planted today if we're lucky we're coming to the end of the field now. Uh, we've got... Oh, and... Down. There we go. Uh, we've just got our headlands to do. Uh, we're going to go head back over to the other side of the field to get those done. Uh, but, yeah, looking pretty good at the moment. We are uh, in a very nice place. Uh, we should be able to get... Uh, all of this done it definitely seems at the moment that that there's little to nothing that has been achieved by putting the osr in here and i'm just thinking actually maybe it's worth doing some experimental videos with some of these things just to uh just to to see exactly where we go with this so what i want to do is i want to put this question to you do you guys want to see me do some experimental videos where I do things like take uh, a couple of strips of a field and uh, have one of them sorted with oilseed radish, the other without, and compare the yields and things like that. And maybe uh, doing some year-to-year -year yield comparisons with uh, with seasons and things like that. I, I'm really interested to see what you guys think. Really interested to see if you want to see that kind of content from me as well. So uh, drop us a note in the comments. Let us know what you think. Uh, should we do some experimental stuff and just see, um, just see exactly what the yield difference and things are for for bits like this? Certainly, at the moment, it doesn't seem to be making much difference um, to this. Uh, other than the fact that we are. I don't even know if we have extra um, fertilization because of doing this either. Let's have a look. We do. So this is so this is counting as a stage of fertilization. Interestingly enough, so uh, that's pretty cool. When we come to uh, actually uh, plant this field in a moment, it will uh, it will be fully fertilized. So that is going to save us. A whack of time for that so it's not all not all is lost it is recognizing this as a, a fertilization stage doing this but it doesn't seem to be recognizing it as the field having gone fallow we will find out in a little bit though 
Um, because we'll we'll start. Uh, we're gonna be doing uh, the drilling of the barley on here. Let's pop out. Make this headland easier to see. Which uh, it looks like it's gonna be wider than our eight meters. Yeah, it is. So I'm gonna have to come back and do uh, do this bit on the inside of the field. Not the most realistic of ways to uh, to have to come back and do that, but I'll be fine. Uh, it doesn't matter so much on here because, uh, of course, we have a built-in cultivator uh, in our cedar, our Vadastad cedar that we have on here. So that's all fine. But yeah, we've gone very Vadastad heavy on here. Let's just pop back round and, uh, and get this. Right, so... And then we can just get this little bit up here. And get these done. Um, but it's uh, yeah. So we're we're we're. I'm I'm happy that it's had at least some effect. Uh, putting this cover crop in here and uh, and getting it to to at least germinate. Um, whether that is going to count as fallow and whether that is going to count as uh, as our field being uh, in a position. Uh, that we want it to be, I don't know at the moment. Uh, it's follow on seasons is one of those things where I'm not quite sure what it, how long you have to leave the field for. Do you actually have to leave the field for an entire year follow in order to be accounted as such, or yeah, or can you get away with doing it for six months or seven months or or whatever? Um, in order to do that, which would, which I, I don't know whether that makes sense or not. Uh, that is the trouble. Either way, this is uh, this is working quite well. So what we're going to do when we get to the end of this field is we're going to take this uh, over to field 39, I think it is. Uh, sorry, 40, uh, 43. 39, when did I get 39? I don't even own field 39. Um... We're going to take it over to field 43 uh, and set this going with course play to do that field, uh, which should work out fine. Uh, oh, we did manage to get all of that, just not on the inside then. And once we've uh, once we've got this doing field 43, uh, we are going to grab our cedar and get to work on this field, getting our barley into here. Uh, Again, we've got an 8 meter cedar, so it's going to take us roughly about the same time to do that job. Um, and, uh, and once we're done both of those jobs on these, uh, on this two, this two, this field, sorry, uh, we should be able to, uh, to switch over and hopefully get the corn done on field 43. Now, that's going to take slightly longer because that is a slightly smaller piece of kit uh, that we have for our cedar for the corn uh, but we do want to get that done this day uh, the corn has only just uh, hit harvest uh, sorry hit seedable uh, so we want to make sure that whatever we're doing uh, we we get that early so that we get our corn at a stage where we're able uh, to, to harvest it as early as possible this year based on uh, what happened with the rain last year and uh, and how much of a pain that was to to actually get our corn cut so that is our field done let's fold this up we're going to take this well, we'll stop it for a moment so that it can actually fold yeah and away we go uh, and we also only want to use this today so let's head over to our other field, put our beacons on and head out onto the road. And then we can get this job done and dusted. Uh, and we can get going with the Vadastad Cedar with the JCB on our main field here and do that. Now it should be able to pull that. Uh, I don't think there's any issues with uh, the JCB pulling the other cedar. One of the nice things about the two tractors that we're running this farm with 
uh, is the fact that they are actually both fairly powerful tractors in their own right. So the class here, this has over 300 horsepower, uh, whereas our JCB has about 250, 260, I think. So, uh, yeah, they both work quite well. Right, we want to end up at this point. So let's get course play going. And let's go forwards. Course generation. Field is 43. Current vehicle position. Starting direction automatic. Headlands, uh, we want it to do. We'll get it to do two on here. Um, because as, as we found in the last one, Clockwise, up downs first, headland corners smooth because we've got a trailed piece of equipment, generate field course. And that's interesting direction, but that will do nicely. So that's something to remember for, for next time, is that actually there is a, a, a decent field course that I think is that should be about 45 degrees. It's, it's one of those things where these fields are... I'm never quite sure the best way to do them. Of course, play has chosen this way, so we're going to go with that. We'll turn off our beacons. Uh, we'll set it to drive course, and it should just pull away from here and get it done. So we're heading over to our JCB. We're going to hook this up to our cedar. And then we can attack field 41 while that is doing field 43. So into here and hook this up. There we go. Uh, we've got canola in here at the moment, so we'll switch that over to barley and head out to our field. So we've got a good amount of fertilizer. We've got a good amount of uh, seed in here. Uh, that is uh, that is good in bo on both counts. Uh, we actually got very, very close to running out of seed on our other piece of kit. Uh, on our other seeder. So uh, yeah, we want to we want to make sure that we're not doing that with this. Hopefully, we've got enough uh, for this. Now I'm just going to double check our power levels on here. So our cedar, if we head over to owned items, uh, our Vatistad cedar here. This takes 210 horsepower. We have 235. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing we have on our farm that both tractors can't run, basically. 225 is our target. Let's unfold our cedar. We have the right crop. There we go. Set our first point. Turn on the cedar. Drop it down and away we go. And again, this is this is an eight meter cedar. Uh, we are just gonna absolutely zoom through this job. There, there, and there. And looking good. Yeah, eight miles an hour, nine miles an hour should be absolutely fine with this. We also have the good maneuverability with this uh, with this tractor as well. And uh, this should work really, really well. So I'm going to get this seeded. And we will see where we are with our cultivator after this job is done as well. So we're on the last couple of rows of field 41 now. And uh, it's gone fairly well. I mean, we've still got plenty of fertilizer left. We've still got plenty of barley left. Um, our Axion, uh, our Terra Track is currently just about halfway through doing the uh, cultivating in the uh, oilseed radish over on field 43 um, and I want to I, I want to jump out quickly and have a look and if we look in here it does say previous is cereal so I'm not sure 
um, how well this has worked on this plan. Um, I did say this, that earlier that I'm, I'm not overly sure whether um, this has actually uh, realized it as this. Uh, and it may have been that we needed to let it go to full growth on the oilseed radish before we could uh, before we could do it. But it's, uh, yeah. We don't seem to have the fallow state that I was hoping for uh, prior to our previous uh, bit here. Uh, but we'll see. I, 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 it's very difficult to actually judge this. And as I was, I was saying earlier as well, it's... It's one of those things where I think we may have to do something special on it and uh, and actually do some testing and uh, and see how it goes on that kind of stuff. Uh, because, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's very difficult to measure unless we go and do something like that. And, uh, and see what effect it actually has. We know at least uh, if we were to set it up uh, the other way... Uh, that, that we know exactly what we got in here. Unfortunately, going straight from wheat to barley, if it has done that, uh, that is going to mean that we're, rather than having the, uh, I think it's 1.2 that we've got at the moment on here. Um, so we're expecting, uh, yeah, we've not got, if I set that to follow, yeah, we'd expect 1.2. If I set it to... Uh, where are you? Wheat. There we go. If we set it to wheat, it's going to be a, a 0 0.5. So it's... It could be that this is not going to pay off at all. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, we need to get... We do kind of need to get that fallow state next time for the corn. But if we've got corn going through a lot, then we should be alright. Now this is our last run down this side of the field. We are going to go round the field now though. Because we need to get the headlands done. So let's lift this up. We'll turn off our cedar for a moment. So yeah, I think getting this fallow stage really does mean that we have to leave the field fallow for an entire year. That is, uh, that is going to take off. Uh, quite a bit of uh, money from us, I think. Unless we can, uh, unless we can sort it out and find a better way. On and down, and we can get this headland going. And the width of this might be enough because this is an eight-meter uh, cedar. Width of this might be enough to cover this here. So we're going to stick along the edge and see if this works. Oh, it's just going to be under, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's just under. And if we set the GPS, uh, then we're going to have to run back just along the side of that field of this field there. Uh, that's absolutely fine. Oh, in fact, it is. It is just this t that tiny little bit uh, back there. So lift our cedar. We hadn't broken our GPS, so that was a problem. But now we've got a little bit more control. We can reverse this up. And considering how much stuff we have in storage, this year is going to be a year where we sell most of our crops. Uh, and if we if we can get a good harvest on this, we will uh, we will certainly get rid of all of our. Uh, uh, all of our loan uh, and maybe even we will be in a position where we can uh, we can start buying some of the bigger equipment so we do need a combine um, we're trying out the uh, we're trying out sugar beet so a sugar beet harvester would be quite a nice thing to buy um, so yeah there's a the few bits and pieces we still need to get for this farm uh, before we could go into a third year on it Want to get that round that corner right. There we go. Really good coverage of this field. Not worth uh, not worth spending the money to go and get those last little bits back. Uh, otherwise, we're, we're looking uh, pretty nice uh, around the farm in general. 
uh, our crops seem to be germinating well. Uh, these are, as I said before, these are our last two fields. I think we're going to end up in a position where uh, we're seeding the corn next time. Because it is three minutes past five in the evening in-game. Uh, it is late spring. But uh, we're, by sort of the standards of when you can get corn in on here, uh, we're, we're doing fairly well. We're looking at having the corn in uh, sort of second day that you can plant it. Which, with any luck, will work out well for us. That bit there is a little too wide to leave. So we'll grab that. And we're not doing a headland. Uh, we're not doing two headlands in general around this field. So we want to try and uh, stick to one where we can. If that leave, means leaving a little bit in some places. It can be very difficult to judge exactly where you want to be to hit your apex. But the great thing about this tractor is how manoeuvrable it is. So we can hit most of what we're targeting. Yeah, we are going to have to go back a little bit, especially in this corner. But, in general, I'm happy with that. That has worked out well. So, let's reverse this round. Get this last little bit of headland done. I like to try and keep inside the boundaries of the field where I can. Round and finish that off. There we go. So that is this field planted, lifted up, folded up, and we'll take this back to our yard and uh, and park it up, and then we'll go and check on our terra track, see how far that is across the field. Uh, I think it's a case of we'll let that go, let that finish our doing that job today uh, which will get both of these fields sorted uh, and then next time we can set this going doing the oh well we can set one of our tractors going planting the corn uh, while we tend to our other crops so let's head over here so this is uh, yeah this is just over halfway through the field really uh, it's got a fair way to go uh, so we're just going to leave this going um, as uh, we finish the stream off and all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed this video please give it a like drop us a comment and give it a share and for all the latest videos and live streams from Virtual Farmer please subscribe to the channel and ring that bell and I will see you next time goodbye <laughs>